Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. First, my apologies. I'm operating currently on basically zero sleep and I'm absolutely exhausted. But we're going to try and start getting some war games done because I'm desperate to start getting things recorded again. So today we wanted to have a look at America's latest air-to-air -air missile. As it stands April 2023, America's latest air-to-air missile in service is the AIM-120D, or the AIM-120D-1, as I like to call it, with a maximum range of just under 90 nautical miles. While China's latest missile in mass service is the PL-15, with significantly higher range, over 120 nautical miles. This is a big gap in technology. So currently, the US are losing the missile race. And this isn't just internet spiel either. The United States accepts this and agrees with it. Their response to leapfrog the PL-15 is this guy down here, the next generation of weapons, the AIM-260. Supposed to be in service early this year, it has unfortunately fallen behind schedule. So they're creating a stopgap missile to level the playing field until the new generation missiles can appear. Introducing the AIM-120D3. It is essentially a modified AIM-120D1. It boosts maximum range from less than 90 nautical miles to an average conservative estimate of 110 nautical miles, just 12 shy of the PL-15. Most of the change between the D1 and the D3 is actually software, and I'm surprised to learn how much of the recent leap in range of air-to-air -air missiles in the last, say, 15 years is not down to the physicality of the missile, it's not down to the booster, what well, it is, but not just down to the booster, not just down to the aerodynamics. It's actually very much also to do with the avionics and the ability for the missile to create and update an efficient flight path for itself. And today, we've got to go and test it. So, war game today. United States Carrier Strike Group versus Chinese Carrier Strike Group. First thing, and this is very important, today, what we're really interested in doing is comparing the missiles to each other, not the actual strike group versus the other strike group. And what that means is I've nerfed the strike groups to make them even same amount of planes, same amount of surface-to-air missiles and whatnot. So all that's even. And that allows us to get a good scientific test between the two missiles. We are in the Persian Gulf. There are 220 miles between the two carriers. I guess the first thing to point out is the strange formation that we're using in the carrier strike groups. If we zoom in on the American one here, we've got a huge spread of tens of miles. And I would like to ask you guys on your opinion of this. Here is my source data. A kind chap from the internet sent me this. He has in-depth experience of how a seven-ship strike group would be laid out in real life. Now, I just realized I haven't actually asked permission to share his name, so I just won't say his name. What he says is a seven-ship would have an aircraft carrier here, destroyer 10 miles to port, destroyer 10 miles to starboard. 500 yards behind, you'd have another destroyer known as the plane guard. 15 miles ahead will be a fourth destroyer. Then 25 miles ahead with 20 miles separation will be two cruisers. So we're going to give that a go today and see how it goes. This is what it looks like in practice. Carrier here, plane guard here, destroyer here, destroyer here, destroyer here, cruiser here, and cruiser here. Quite a funny looking formation if you ask me. It doesn't make a huge deal of sense to me because in my mind they would be within probably five miles of the carrier to keep it closely guarded by their weapons. But I've been told this is how they would actually do it. So let me know what you guys think. wonder if they're doing this because of the uh, multi-sensor capability of the aircraft. Maybe. Because the aircraft are in the future are supposed to be more spread out than they are right now too. I guess another thing we should say is how is this going to affect our war games that we do? Because the war games we do are slightly unrealistic in that they are much closer than they would be in real life. In real life, it's unlikely that carrier groups will get 200 miles away from each other before they attack. So we'll probably do it 500 miles or something. But we simply don't have that amount of time to run. We'd need a couple of hours to do that. Anyway, let's punch on for now. One important thing to point out is that I have nerfed the ability of all destroyers and cruisers today to 99 
90s technology. So no 130 mile SM6 missiles. Instead, we've got early block SM2 missiles with a range of 60 or 70 miles. Why have I done that? Again, it's because we really want to concentrate on what we're here to do today. Air to air missiles are what we're interested in, not the ability of ships. We've done plenty of videos on the ships. On the carrier will be the air wing. It is a reduced amount. Each carrier is carrying 32 AI aircraft, again, to keep it scientific and equal. There will be no fifth gen jets today for America for the same reasons that I keep spouting out. So, America have 32 FA 18F Super Hornets. All AI today is at maximum skill level and they are set to fire a maximum range because that's what suits the type of missiles that are being used today. Also, once they fired all of their long or medium range missiles, they will RTB. There are also humans today. Now, at the moment, with GR Baby just arrived, unfortunately, we can't make our normal schedule. I have to basically quickly whip the mission up whenever Baby is sleeping and run the mission whenever Baby is napping, which means I've only managed to get one chap today, which is Poosh. Hello, Poosh. Morning. Poosh, you're going to have to, because I can only get you on today, you're going to have to be the Americans and the Chinese, so you'll have to alternate goes. And the equipment, by the way, today, viewers, is 12, maximum load of 12, aim on 20, D3, and Ram's range of 110 nautical miles, a couple of sidewinders and a bag. You start five miles behind your respective carrier. 220 miles to the west is a, well, essentially a carbon copy, but for the Chinese, you've got a Chinese carrier, modern carrier. You've got earlier destroyers, uh, type 052C from the 2000s, about equivalent to a 1990s American ship. Aboard, of course, are 32 aircraft, J-15 Bravos, with their maximum loadout of eight PL-15s and four PL-10s, and they will have humans as well for push to use. It's as simple as that. Now, in terms of predictions, so the Chinese have a few more miles on their missile. The PL-15 is still going slightly further than the A120D3, but there's almost nothing in it. In terms of the aircraft, what's better, a Super Hornet or a J-15B? Slightly better loadout on the Super Hornet, but that will equate to more weight and drag on the aircraft, so that will probably equal itself out. So I can see no clear-cut winner. Bearing in mind the way we've got it set up, but your predictions, please. I think the Americans will win, primarily because they just have more missiles. Welcome in viewers, uh, Pooch reminded me that I forgot to put any AWACS in because super cap, so I put a bunch of AWACS in more or less equal per side. You're going to see lots of errors like that viewers until GR Baby settles in, I'm afraid that's just uh, life. 3, 2, 1, off we go viewers, let's get back into our war games. Who are we going to go and look for first? Let's have a look at Chinese will get airborne today slightly quicker than the Americans, it's just the way the aircraft work, it's not particularly realistic but it will average itself out over the as the minutes go so don't worry too much about it ah look at that viewers i did not expect that to happen anti-ship missiles have been fired um it's gonna have no effect on today don't worry these are old 90s missiles or something subsonic missiles if they make it over oman and uae here which they probably won't then they won't get past the defenses so keen-eyed among you will spot that the Chinese are using an American supercarrier today. Man, I forgot how good this game sounds. The Americans use their carrier different to how the Chinese do. The Americans, if you see, they're all operating on the carrier full-time, whereas the Chinese just spawn on the catapults. It's just a uh, limitation at the moment we have. Americans are taking off. They're a couple of minutes behind the Chinese, but like I said, don't worry. It will average itself out at the same launch rate after a couple of minutes. Look at all those YJ-61s. It looks impressive, viewers, but it's not very impressive. It's, uh, like I said, it's old tech and would not threaten even a 1990s American carrier group. Again, the reason I've done that, in case you skipped the briefing, viewers, is I've deliberately nerfed all naval assets today because what we're interested in is the air-to-air -air missile fighting. Who's his first man in? Angel 17. First use today here, shown on Grim Reaper's viewers of the A120 D3. When? Got a lot. You got a lock already? Yep. Impressive, standby. That is super impressive. 160 nautical miles, viewers. Must be an AWACS. Yeah, they're showing it uh, 300 kilometers. Yeah, it's an AWACS. AI hey, doing some cool fly. Sun is very shiny today, viewers. Look at look at that saturation. Big saturation. 
A lot of you ask why we use this older VSN model mod for the um, Super Hornet instead of the more detailed one that's out. It's because this is the only version we can get our Grim Reapers missiles to work on. Right distance between aircraft fronts 143 nautical miles with the Hornets nearly as high as the J-15s. Actually, that's quite impressive. Okay, I've got fighters locked up now. At... 137 miles that's pretty impressive super hornet is now at 36,000 feet much lighter than the uh, j15 bravos and probably going to climb faster and supersonic actually another thing we should say when we were talking in our intro viewers about the modern missiles how they achieve such efficient shots they only work if they're fired very high about 40,000 feet and supersonic if you want to get these long range of 110 nautical miles or 120 nautical miles you've got to fire them at the absolute optimum right let's see have these missiles for what it's worth made it over the note they've not <laughs> look at that viewers <laughs> so we can laugh at them we have a missile out who's fired it it's the Chinese have got the missile. Pang, PL-15 at 110 nautical miles. And America have immediately replied with their... Look at that. Yep, they're firing their A120D3s. So just a few seconds behind the uh, J-15. So this is going to be interesting, viewers. I should say at this point, and I should always say it, and you should always expect it, none of these matches we do are biased or scripted for YouTube views, there's a very good chance the popular guys, the American guys, are going to lose. So be prepared for that, viewers. More PL-15s in the air than the A120 D3 so far, for whatever reason. Probably just because there's a more bigger first wave of J-15s in the air. In terms of how many aircraft are airborne, it's going to be even at the moment, or it will soon will be after a few more minutes. Distance between airborne fronts of 90 nautical miles. Let's go and catch up with the first fired missile, PL-15. I can already see, viewers, and I do apologise, uh, that the blue weapons are not being counted. That is a little bit frustrating, the scoreboard. So scoreboard you're going to have to uh, ignore today. Again, baby brain viewers. Some more A120 D3s coming out. Let's have a look at them. Uh, what do they look like? Exactly the same as an A120D. As far as I'm aware, aesthetically, there's going to be no difference. Missiles are crossing. Slightly biased towards the American side of bullseye, and that's because the uh, Chinese fired first. Missile speeds. Missile aero and whatnot are pretty much even as far as we can see. So these missiles are going to be more or less even. Distance between AI airborne fronts of 54 nautical miles. And the first missile is going to start raining down now. How effective are the AMRAMs going to be against the PL-15s? Probably about the same, I would imagine. Same speed, pretty much same aero. In terms of sensors in-game, they're going to be pretty much identical. In real life, that may vary, obviously, but that's all non-public data. Right, here we go. First Hornet's evasive. Can Superbog outrun it? Probably not. First man down. Superbogington. Bang! One J-15 down, two Superbogs down, or Superbugs, whichever you care. Missile is missed. Missile is not missed. Missile is still guiding. That PL-15. In fact, really, we should be looking at AMRAM, shouldn't we, viewers? That's what we're really here for. A120 D3. Look at it pointing its little nose. And there's a lot of calculation that has to happen for the path of this missile, viewers. There's a lot of... I know it seems simple. It seems like a 1980s computer could figure this out, but it's not. It's actually very complex and a lot of stuff that has to be done in a very quick amount of time. J-15 down. Three J-15 down, four Hornets down, slightly biased towards the Chinese at the moment. Look at that. Look at that guy there. So close. No Man's Land at the moment is biased towards China and is a distance of 45 nautical miles. Killing and PK is pretty good. A lot of these missiles will miss and that is because of jammers. It's because the target they were going for has been killed. And so for the missile it just goes dumb after that. So you will see a lot of missiles missing. Like that one there has gone up to 80,000 feet. The thing it was fired at was probably dead at about five minutes ago we are 10 minutes in it's now even stevens four j15s down four f18s down apush you still alive i haven't seen you for a while no i got shot down i'm respawned okay. mm -hmm. here we go this baby's tracking here 15 and he's beating it and look how look, the peel 15 has now gone 220 nautical miles viewers and is now in the american carrier group there is an American carrier down there somewhere. There he is. That's gone 220 miles, viewers. 
Again, let me know what you think of this box formation. I'm slightly worried it's going to cause some problems for our naval games, but we'll we'll see. Bang! Wow, where did that come from? Six Super Hornets down for four J15s uh, yep, down. Words and stuff. This guy's getting chased. Missiles got too slow. Missiles subsonic. J15 is supersonic. It's nice fighting over the land for once of yours, isn't it? Still six to four. I'm trying to look for... Ugh, here we've got an A120D3 that's now over the... Uh, not Japanese. Chinese carrier. And it's trucking. No, it's not. That run out of... Run out of everything a long time ago, by the looks of it. It appears the taxpayer cost is working, viewers. Although the missiles aren't being counted on the blues, the taxpayer cost appears to be being added up. Uh, it's 1.3 million per A120D3 dollars. That guy's going to get hit. No, he's not. Well, that guy certainly is. Seven Americans out. It was even. It was even. And, and the Chinese have just suddenly taken the lead. As well as that, they're also doing getting to balls better. Why is that? Is the J-15 faster? Yes, it actually is. Is their missile faster? No, it's not. But their plane's faster. Will that make a difference today? Absolutely. Whoops. Uh, yep, the guy with the faster plane is going to have the advantage. At least kind of location-wise. This guy's going to have to go evasive now. Where's the missile that's after him? Can he defeat it? Is there anything about a J-15 that is, makes it better for dodging? Not really. Um, they've, it's got the same jammer. In real life, it has a different jammer to the Superbugs, but the Superbug in-game, they've got the same jammer. Uh, it's a simplified self-protection jammer. So there's not a huge amount that's going to make it better at dodging. Now, interestingly, the Chinese have done so well, they've pushed past Bullseye now, which is good, but it can also be bad, because if you do a rommel and you overstretch your supply lines, viewers, you, it can bite you in the arse, so that may happen today. The Americans are putting it back now, six versus eight. Thus far, PL-15. That guy's just fired. It's winning the race. He's fired. Did you see how inefficiently he fired it, viewers? He, he fired it on a 45-degree crank, which burnt off loads of the speed of that PL-15. Like we were talking before, that is not going to do 120 miles now. That would be lucky to do 50 miles because of the inefficiency of that shot. This guy's going to get hit. Super Buckington. Bang! Smack. Okay, nine versus six. China's still winning. 10 versus 6, oh dear. And in terms of why that is, viewers, to be honest, you know just as me as much as me at this point. All of the aircraft speeds and whatnot are as per Wikipedia. All of the missiles are as per, you know, decent public sources. So you know as much as me of what's going on here. So why are they winning? Try and look at that and figure out why. Well, what I know is they've managed to hold Bullseye a lot better. The Chinese have. 10 to 7. Annoyingly, we don't have a counter for the uh, American missiles, but I think the Americans... I fired less missiles. That is my uh, assumption of what's happened here. Oh my god, it's taken a massive leap for the bad viewers. A whole load of PL-15s have just made contact with Super Hornets. And they're nearly doubling their score now. This is bad. This is very bad. Ah, they're now, now doubling their score. Viewingtons. I hate it when America loses because I literally get a massive fall in donations. Come on, America, fight back. We need clothes for baby. Come on, get that shot off at least. Good shot. Good shot. He's just chucking him out now. He knows he's going to die. He's just chucking him out there. Uh, will they still guide when he's dead? Absolutely. As soon as they get fired... Well, actually, it's a bit more complicated than that. But essentially, as soon as they get fired, the Grim Reaper's missiles are now guided on the data link from the AWACSs. So you can fight all 12 off at target, then die, and all 12 will carry on a track. Look at that guy firing there. Come on, America! Unfortunately, viewers, I'm pretty sure this is going one way. But, that said, it was all done fair and square. America's pulling it back, 14 to 9, 14 to 9 viewingtons. Have we got overstretched lines? And overstretched lines is a real thing, viewers. If they get out too far, A, they start to run out of fuel, which makes them a, a sitting duck. B, they get too far away from their support. If, you know, they get too stretched too far out in front, they don't have guys covering them with missiles when they turn cold and whatnot, and they get picked off easier. So it's a real thing. America's catching up 10 to 14. I'd love to know how many missiles have been fired. I really want that information. Got Poosh here in a super bug now, just evening out the humans. Sorry I couldn't get lots of humans today, viewers, but that's... That's baby life, I'm afraid. In about two weeks, I hope to get him settled down and we can start to get him back to something like normal. This guy's about to get smacked, I think. 14 to 10. Still in China's favour, Ewington Wilmington's. Missile was duped. Missile's dead. 
Also, missiles will run out of battery. We put the best known battery life, uh, which actually tends to be easy to find out in public data, uh, on missiles, and they will run out of battery. We don't want any cheaty laser missiles, not in the GR. Come on, sir. Come on, dodge, dodge, dodge. Dodge. No, he's dead. He's dead. See the angle he's got? He's dead. Stop nag it. 10 to 15. Woo -hee. Hey, one good thing, China's been pushed back. They did overstretch, look. They're 22 miles back from bulls now, and America's now pushing 33 miles back from bulls. So that's that's a thing. You want my opinion, viewers? I think J-15's better at dodging missiles than a superbug. Which I think... Oh, I don't know if it's realistic or not. It's so hard to know, viewers. Uh, superbug does have a lower rate of cross-section to one of these here, but it's really only straight head-on like that. And the side and rear and stuff, it, it makes no difference, so... Here we go. That's a dead. That's a dead J-15. Got a good track. Bang. Smack ya. Oh, he didn't die. Yes, he did. 11 to 15. Come on, pull it back, boys. This guy defensive as hell. Uh, you could argue maybe I've overloaded them, viewers. It's such a hard decision to make. However I load these guys up, I'm damned. If I load them too light, you guys shout at me. Too heavy, you guys shout at me. So kind of got the ethos of just put as many missiles on you can as I can now, to be honest. Come on, let's get some impacts on these trucks. Look at that guy there. He's overstretched and he's out of fuel. And these carry a lot of fuel. Much more fuel than a J uh, Super Hornet. They're better legs than a Super Hornet. Oh, he hasn't got any missiles. He's fired all his missiles. I take that back. He's gone, he's fired, he's done his killing, he's RTB now. That's annoying. 11 to 19, where did that come from? Jesus, lots of Super Hornets going down now. I wish we had like some analytic, oh, I was going to say, some analytic way of checking why these kills have happened. We do, we've got tack for you, so we can go and find out. But even with that, it's, you need a real clever guy to be able to analyse it. And that clever guy is not me, especially not at the moment. Uh, if you're interested in doing some work like that, viewers, doing some analysis, contact me in private and... Uh, if you've got time to sit and analyse this stuff, I would, you know, love that kind of feedback, but I'm never going to be able to do it now. Oh, no. 12 to 21. Half the American fly uh, air wings down. More than half the American, two-thirds the American air wings down. Only one-third of the Chinese air wings down. When we're talking about radar cross-section viewers of the Hornet being less than the J-15, that is modelled. These guys I've got set as 1.5 metres squared. These guys have got set as 5 meters squared, just the same as a basic flanker. In real life, they might actually be less, because I think the J-15B is using composites on leading edges. But I've been conservative, and I've just set them to 5 meters squared. So America has the advantage in cross-section here. They're not self, but they are low visibility. Good dodge. 12 to 21. Still looking pretty ugly, and he's going to go down. Well beaten. Oh, the Chinese have had another push and have now pushed all the way past Bullseye, making a massive slam. This guy's gone defensive. 12 to 21 still. America's have fired their first Sam. That's how... Uh oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, this is an old SM2 from the 1990s. Kind of hybrid Block 1 SM2. They're pretty... Oh, they're alright, I suppose. That's a bad sign because it means these Chinese have got literally all the way to the American carrier group. Yep, this guy's got to the American carrier group pretty much. Look at this guy. This guy's got into aim line x range. He's pushed so far into the American. Americans have been so soundly defeated that they pushed all the way into the carrier group, although it's about to get smacked here. Unfortunately, that PL-15 will uh, continue and will probably get to its target at that range and will probably kill an American. 14 kills to 22. The Americans need to friggin' step their game up, viewers. Now here's a really interesting thing viewers, different aircraft in game under AI control perform differently so Super Hornets will fly, will try and dodge missiles differently from those J-15s. Why is that? No one's ever figured it out as far as I'm aware. Maybe they analyse their basic data and make some assumptions based on that at the beginning of the game, it's going to get hit. Another American down, dang it. 23 to 15. Come on, let's see some American kills going on here. In terms of the tr track capabilities, viewers, uh, it's all based on these AWACSs here, and they're equal. I've set them the same, e you know, same E2D. I just do everything equal nowadays, just to keep it super simple and as empirical as possible. Everything here is, is equal. The guidance, the uplink of the missiles is equal because we've set the same one on all missiles regardless of coalition. So there's no weird advantage PL-15 has got over A120D in, in terms of its information handling and data links. Shit. Talk me through it, Poosh. Well, I just got shot again. Hmm. 
I'm afraid you're going to get a lot of that today. It's it's the first time, first mm -hmm. time through, I couldn't launch any um, of the D3s. Huh. Interesting. And to be honest, we've not even had a chance to test them as humans until today. We'll do a quick debrief just to check they can be fired, but that's that's a thing. Usually we have you as a bunch of humans in here, so the humans tend to do different things. They go off down the side and tend to have human on human fights. Poor old Pooh, she's stuck in the melee of the AI fight, and a human can never take on AI in these quantities at these skill levels. It's just, it's not set up fairly really in game to be able to do it. So poor old Pooh, she's, uh, I'm afraid he's going to lose, lose whatever he does here, but he's going to give it a damn fine go. This thing's still tracking. I swear these PL 15s are tracking better, look, viewers. It's tracking all the way at his own friggin' carry group. 16 kills to 26. Definitely got the D3s on, haven't we? I'm sure we did. I'll go and double check everything when we um, switch off viewers. So I'm pretty sure everything's set up right. Okay, 16 to 27 kills. And we've got a friggin' uh, Rambo J15 coming through again. They just got up to Mark II and just plow their way through, look, viewers. Chinese are just flying so frigging good. It's all the way over to the American carrier group again, annoyingly. Come on, hit him, hit him. Hit him! Too late though, it's missiles. It's missiles are all guiding on the data link. They're all going to hit their targets. Personally, I think it's better flying from the AI, from the Chinese AI today, from what they're doing, how they're dodging their missiles, how they're doing the tactics, how long they're defending for, that kind of stuff. And it's strange because really, like Poosh said, the Americans should have won this. Their planes, although they can't go as fast, can carry more missiles. That's good. They've got a lower radar cross section as modeled here. That's good. They've got everything going for them. Um, I know the Chinese uh, could launch quicker at the beginning, but it does average itself out over the air wing. Uh, I've checked it. So that is equal. Oh, poor Poosh, look. Got hit 120 miles behind. Unlucky Poosh. That's fighting AI air wing, I'm afraid. And the air wings are now exhausted on both sides. Uh, Chinese have just done better, so they've got guys going back and landing at base. The Americans just haven't. Oh the, Amer oh, the Americans have only got a few guys airborne now. We might as well see it to the end, viewers. 18 to 31, almost a, almost a 2 to 1 kill ratio. Man, nothing wrong with the AWACSs. The AWACSs look good. 19 to 32. Look at that, spray and pray. Missed. I reckon these guys are dodging better. Fourteen American Sams out. Two American pilots left in the air. The dodge. Oh, look at that reacquiring! Did you see that viewing turns? Excellent re reacquiring word. Characteristics of the PL15 today. Oh, that's lost him again, and it's gained him again. Remember how it does that? It's just chasing him, it's chasing him. Look at that! Look what it's doing. Maybe that's why it's winning, viewers. Maybe you can do some weird friggin' Matrix shit. Trace him all the way to the end, look. Oh, jeez, he's got another one after him. Scores are now 22 to 33, so that's 3 to 2. 3 to 2. Still two Americans airborne. Well, let's see it through. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Go up to blow up. He's got his missiles off, at least. One American left. And he is in all kinds of crap. Go on, Gonzalez. Friggin' do it. Jeez, look at the kinematic ability of that Super Hornet view. is absolutely flying. Reduced load now so it can really accelerate. Max speed, uh, Mark 1.8, I believe. I promise I'll see it to the end, so we will see it to the freaking end. Let's watch Gonzalez go. 
bunch of legacy missiles, almost certainly not a threat. Oh, maybe, maybe. Trying. No, couldn't do it. Didn't have the arrow to do it. Gonzalez firing. Hero American. Firing everything. Again, he has that ability for geo missiles to fire them all off and turn around. In fact, that's one thing that's stupid about AI. Uh, it doesn't understand how to use the GR missiles. It, 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 it could take off, fight all 12, then just turn around and go and land. And that would be just as effective as carrying on. But uh, AI doesn't understand the ability to do that. It's never, it was never programmed. But it kind of makes it better like this because it means we see some guys getting hit. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be guys launching at 120 miles, turning around, and no one ever gets hit. It would be stupid. Push is going absolutely nuts. Absolutely wants Gonzalez dead. And who can blame him? Game was over 20 minutes ago, when we are 32 minutes in. Gonzalez is dead, and evaded. Huh? Gonzalez apparently won to live and dodge too. All right, game on, viewers. For as long as Gonzalez has fuel, and he's firing again. What a freaking hero! Not killing anyone, but bit of a him problem. Let's see. He might even get a cheeky Gonzalez kill here. He is going to get cheeky Gonzalez kills. One kill just on the scoreboard. See if he can get two. He's got. He just got two. This might be three. Three kills from Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, and he's dead. He's dead himself. All right, that's it. I'm pausing, Poosh. Uh, I, I apologize for that, viewers. Like I said, we set everything up as fairly as we can, and sometimes the Americans will just lose. Sometimes it is just due to bad luck. Sometimes you can run the same thing again, and it will have the other result and this is just what we do like i said we never script these for youtube views we just get on with it and do it um push i'm gonna go and quickly check i can fire an m120d3 i'm pretty sure i should be able to but i was i was able to you were them. okay yeah no they were definitely working viewers plus i saw them the ai using them as well and that's it it happened it was a kind of three to two ratio in the chinese favor you guys now need to go away you've got as much information as me at this point go away and tell me why that happened. If anything, it's actually an American's bias. They've got probably better jets carrying better missiles with a better radar cross-section. Radars are all the same today. The radars in the planes are the same. We do it for simplicity. Everyone's using the same AWACS and the ship's radar is going to be pretty much the same. The missiles are they're different. They're not, not just copying and pasted, but they're so dead on close today. There's only a few miles in it. The speeds are the same. The air resistance is the same. The fin actuation is going to be the same pretty much. Why? Why? Tactics. Were the uh, mm -hmm. 15s able to climb quicker than the Hornets? No, I watched that. The Hornets actually took off two minutes afterwards because of how the carriers work and actually got to 36, 40,000 before the 15s. The 15s climbed slower in this case. Bigger, heavier, not the best engines in the world. I don't know. I guess we go when the video comes out, we watch it again and see if, if there's any obvious reason why stuff is happening. Like I said, viewers, anyone's got some time out there wants to go over the data, pour over the data and find out for me, do that. Poosh, anything from your side, or anything of interest? Well, it's interesting that they were able to increase the range of the AMRAMs just through software. Would they yep. be able to uh, retrofit the uh, Cs I th to bring them up to that standard? I'm almost certain. I know two... Oh, Cs. No, C is a different motor. They would only be able to rep uh, retrofit the D1 because the D3 and the D1 have the same motor in them. And you guys have built 2048, I think, D1s. So presumably, or oh, I'm almost certain, they're going to retrofit those 2000 D1s to D3s with the software. And there's some other bits I've forgotten, viewers. There's a slight change in the warhead and some, and some odds and sods. Oh, date link's slightly different. Uh, it's just really in the intelligence of the missile, so I'm almost certain they're just going to be changed over time. So you will have 2,000 D3s soon. All right, good to be back in the saddle, viewers. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do another one because baby, but let me know your thoughts, and we will see you later.